Okay, so our next speaker um, is Associate Producer Rebecca <coughs> Um, and she's going to talk to us about using e-assessment for summative assessment of population health learning in ANU medical schools. Um, and she works with the Population Health College of Health and Medicine. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So can we just um, mark you up? Oh. Like Cathy, I am on two different types of antihistamine this morning. Um, because if you'd seen me in our earlier, I'll just hold this. Um, I was sneezing and getting all the dirty looks, people thinking she's infectious. No, I'm not. It's just my hair fever. So, um, both Claudia and Rafa today. Claudia, unfortunately, could not make it because she's unwell. Um, so, we're going to talk about the assessment, which is the first time we've used it. Um, and before I go a bit further in terms of why we decided to go into e-assessment, I'd like you to, to give you a bit of an understanding of how our medical school curriculum is designed. So, we have a postgraduate four-year medical degree. Um, there are a number of disciplines in the program, a population health being one. Um, so we have 15%, when I say we, I'm talking about myself, Claudia, and my colleague Devon, who's there, um, teach across the four years in uh, different capacities, and we do different things across the four years. So today we're going to only talk about the first two years, which is year one and year two, and talk about replacing uh, the traditional assessment with an online assessment. Okay, so I've pretty much said much of what I wanted to, and I'd also be talking a bit about the issues in marking and feedback and some of the advantages and disadvantages that we're discovering around using it as summative assessment. Okay, you heard Cathy make a wonderful presentation using um, online tools in Wattle. Um, I'm not sure whether it allows you to look up the originality score um, or not, but that's something we can talk about. There are other ways of doing online stuff, such as portfolios, wikis, discussions. We call it quizzes here, but our quizzes are really a combination of multiple choice and short answer questions. In medicine, we do abbreviate. Apologies. And love having lots of acronyms for some reason. Um, but it also helps um, in standardizing some of our long-winded words. Okay. So, as I said, there are a number of themes and frameworks. What's the difference between the two? We probably don't have the time to go through. Um, but how the curriculum is structured is in a spiral uh, mechanism, uh, in a spiral dynamic scaffolding. Um, and it's supposed to be an integrated curriculum. So all of these things, oops. Ooh. That's pretty dramatic. Am I going to be lifted up? Sometimes it's in the middle of the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah, it does happen. <laughs> okay, that's maybe very quickly. So, uh, blocks are ac according to body systems. So, um, and that's how we have our teaching. It's a combination of small group teaching, lectures, um, clinical sessions, which are called the problem based learning. And we are gradually introducing prompt-based learning and trying to align our teaching with each of the sessions as they appear so students can see an integration in the pop health curriculum and not see it as sitting outside of the medical and the clinical sciences. Okay, so what used to happen? 
We used to, in the pre-218 era, give them a 3,000 word essay on a range of topics. So they could select one of the three topics. They were required to produce an essay in the form of a scientific report or a publishable quality draft um, for a journal. Um, and that's worth 5% of the integrated assessment. It was easier to set it up, but uh, did require thinking through a lot of topics um, insofar as we didn't want to repeat the same topics year in, year after. Um, and the same applies to year two as well. So in 218, after sort of realizing the amount of marking we were doing, and simply not finding it very efficient. We decided to, because it's our first year, we decided um, to go into breaking the assignment into 2% and 3% uh, respectively and have a combination of MCQs and short answers in a platform called Cura Cloud, which I'll come to in a minute. And we give them two to three weeks to complete. So it opens, it's available to all the students, it's open book. Um, they can research the questions and then answer accordingly. Okay, so what do they do? So it is essentially trying to link it back to what they've learned in each of the two years. Um, but if you look here, there were 12 MCQs which are auto-marked and nine SAQs which <coughs> are marked by the assessor. Um, and the same here. So, um, and then it becomes a lot more as we move into the second component, which we're just about to finish. So this is a platform which the ANU Medical School purchased after looking through a few in 2016-17, and it's called Cura Cloud, and our expert in Cura Cloud is sitting at the back, who also was or is the keynote speaker for today, Alex Webb. Any questions about Cura Club, please go there. <laughs> um, so this is the front page of what the first year assignment looks like. We have designated logos to separate out first and second year. We give them a whole lot of information about what to do. Um, there is an article that they need to read, and then we give them the deadline by which they have to complete, and the article is available, or the link is available online. So if they click on it, or click on the link, they should be able to um, get on and read it. <coughs> okay, Cure Cloud allows a range of questions. So the basic is using a text question, upload and annotate an image, which works better in other disciplines than pop health. Um, multiple choice questions. We could also have table questions, and I'll go through some of these in a minute. And there are others that we are, are wanting to experiment, but we haven't had time to, and perhaps they're not better for, uh, they're not appropriate for uh, a summative assessment. Okay, here are two examples. So in the first year, there are asked some MCQs, and the marking for the MCQs there. So once they complete, we have the option of saying immediate feedback, or once they complete, they can see all the answers and why it is so. In the second year, they may get, this is um, a graph from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, a holy grail for data. Um, and one of the things I've been trying to do in year two is to make them apply the concepts that learned in first year and also in second year, um, because Medical students often have difficulty telling us things coherently and concisely in two sentences. So you should, uh, should have had a video where they mimicked me when I asked them in one of the last sessions. I said, how do you read a graph? And they said, ah, oh, according to Professor Hussain, this is how you read a graph. Um, they're wonderful actors, by the way. If they don't make it as doctors, they have a second profession to go to. Um, Okay, so they get information. This is where it is useful. When they get the correct answer, they well, not just get the correct answer, they also get to know why is it the correct answer, just like Kathy's talked about. And that reinforces the learning insofar as why did I get it wrong? 
Um, it's not just about getting it right or getting it wrong, but also knowing why I got it wrong. Um, in the formative, we allow multiple um, options. In the summative, of course, we can't allow them to have multiple attempts at it until they sort of guess and find out the right answer. Um, th this is an example of a list where the answers are already there. Once they've come up with their answers, they can immediately see um, which one of these would be applicable. We can also do this as a click and drag kind of a thing. Thank you. Um, and here is another example, which is very different, where they have some data um, given to them from the study. Now, where, what they have to do is, this is all taught to them, but this is their application, that they have to figure out how to fill these cells, and how do we get the numbers, and how do you then interpret it? So you're saying one part of the question, the second part is, what do you do with these numbers? Because doctors don't actually have to sit down and neither do people in population health actually use a calculator or a software unless they're doing research. Um, we interpret journal articles, but the fundamentals of how and why a particular number appears in magic um, is important, and more so as a, patients are going to be far more literate um, the, than they've been before in terms of lo not just looking up Google, but looking up WebMD, Mayo Clinic, etc. They have some of the data with them when they come for consultation. So students need to know what a particular study has strengths and limitations, etc. So, going further, so here's an example of a short answer. Um, this is the model answer that they've given. Here's a, the model answer is available once they attempt the question, but they get to know what will be the total marks. They can see before they attempt the question what is the marking guide. So if it is worth seven points, what do those seven points comprise of? So students then know where to pitch their effort and how much uh, detail is required of them and at what level of sophistication um, it's required. Okay. What does it look like once they've done it? So this is having the autograde on. So all the ones in orange or brown are the MCQ answers uh, that are being automarked, so, or the results of the MCQ um, attempts. And the blue ones are the where Claudia or myself have gone and looked at the answer against the model answer and given them the marks. So in this case, the marks are out of four, and somebody's got three. This one means that they haven't yet been marked. Um, and so on and so forth. This is out of five, and there's a 3.5, and there's a 4.5. Brave of Claudia to do 4.5s. Um, but it does automatically um, <coughs> add up in the end. So we don't end up doing it. It sort of gives us the total score, which I'll show you. Uh, again, in our way of showing you what we do, so the students do have the model answer, but both of us do, in our experience, we've found students come back and say, well, you use the model answer, but mine was slightly different, so where's my feedback on it? So we do have to put in extra effort to give them feedback why they may be different from the model answer. Just saying, which I did with the first assignment, C model answer, does not cut it with our students, uh, no matter how detailed the, uh, the model answer may be. Okay. So this is the overall mark. We can adjust the mark. We can give the overall impression of how students have worked or performed. And you get some of the analytics item by item um, in Clear Cloud. Okay, advantages and disadvantages. Yes, it does allow for faster marking, but there's an asterisk around it. It's all online. So it takes a while, if you've got 104 student cohort and 10 short answers to go through each one of them to make sure it aligns or doesn't align with the model answer and then give them feedback accordingly of why they've not been given the full mark. Um, 
It does allow better feedback. I do agree with it. We yet have to see whether this last assignment leads to fewer student appeals. Um, we don't have the data to say that it leads to improved ex exam performance or student satisfaction yet. Um, the disadvantages also need to be talked about. As Alex said, sometimes we need to think about what we are using the technology for. Um, there's no way, at least in Cura Cloud, for us to look at the originality. As I've been marking all of last week, I can see some students, you eventually see a pattern, but it's very hard to prove that pattern to a student or take it somewhere else in terms of, well, you're all making the same mistake, how come? Even though you can look at the time, etc. Um, yes, thank you. Difficult to test in depth knowledge because the answers, in short answers, by necessity have to be short, unlike an essay where you can in depth assess students' ability. The other thing, which is not on this list, is grammar completely goes out of the window. So I'm not getting any commas, I'm not even getting full stops. They start a sentence without an uppercase. Um, that's probably a text generation as well. Um, sometimes you get long answers. And one of the disadvantages, which is a platform dis issue, is once there are times when we've made an error. The students have picked it up, pointed to us, um, but when we republish the fixing it and republish, the students still see the old version. That's something we need to talk to our um, online developers to see if we can take this part out. So, in conclusion, it is a wonderful platform to do tutorials and formative assessment. We are not so sure about summative assessment. We are also not sure when we are looking at Bloom's taxonomy, um, which equates with other principles, whether we are fully, in terms of summative assessment, able to, given the options we have of multiple choice, short answers, click and drag, look at these two components, which is a bit of an analysis is there, but evaluation and creation is not there. Um, and that's where I'll leave and take some questions. Thank you very much for your time. and for the short answers. Now, where do you put the quizzes on? Yes. Because we do teach online, okay? And uh, what's the time frame? Because you said that you give them the criteria of marking. So do they have the time to read the criteria and then they will assess what they are doing or that is being given to them? Early? Everything is preset. So when they, so for example, the second assignment for year two opened on 10th of October and closed on 24th of October. So that was roughly two weeks. Um, students, and they were sort of like big flashlight kind of warnings that if you attempt an MCQ, you will not be able to attempt it. So go through, think about it, keep a scratch piece of paper or a notepad with you, with whatever notepad is, a digital or whatever. Think about your answers before you give us. In terms of looking at the analytics yesterday, now again the problem is we can see that an overall there is, for some students there is a huge peak. Some have used something like the equivalent of 4,000 minutes to do the assignment. But it's not clear whether those 4,000 minutes were spent actually doing the assignment or sort of looking at the questions and then doing something else or reading about it or going away and having coffee. Uh, we can also get our information per question but again the details of whether they were actually doing it or doing something else is not there. What I can say is students have performed incredibly well on the assignment um, and looking through even though issues of collusion are there, but for most of the students, the answers, I've actually copied and pasted because some of their answers are better than my model answers. 
Um, so it does, and what I intend to use it for is for open it up next year because I'm not going to use the same assignment as a formative one and use student answers to say your peers from a previous cohort have answered it in this way. So it does have its advantages in terms of reinforcing knowledge and the power of saying this is from your peers rather than from us. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe one more question. Four. Yeah, Okay, um, I just want to point out from my knowledge that, uh, um, that a lot of those questions, type, types that we use, can be replicated using Boosted in um, Moodle, in Model. Mm -hmm. um, but with a fair bit of practice and knowledge, um, I must say, for some of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be done. Um, and Kura Cloud is a great tool, as Alex will attest, but it does, you do have to pay for a license. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure. Now, like,